Welcome back to RBD Block Challenge. We are working on block number five, and this block was designed by Christopher Thompson. It's called Sundial, and you're really gonna love it because it's kind of the sorbet of the challenge because it's a little easier than some of the other blocks and it's so fun to put together. We're only going to make squares and half square triangles, put them all together to make this beautiful sundial pattern. So you've previously needed to download the pattern from our RBD website, gives you all the materials needed, the cutting instruction, the tools you'll need, and I've already cut everything out and marked my squares. So the first thing it says to do on the pattern is grab your B block and your C block. And we're gonna make half square triangles. So I'm gonna mark these two blocks. Corner to corner, using your marking tool. And then you put them right sides together like that. And then I'm gonna sew them after I follow step number two. So step number two, I'm making half square triangles as well. So I grab my G and E blocks and I've already marked these corner to corner. So all I have to do is put them right sides together and then we can do one long chain piece sewing method. Now this is my, this marked line is not our sew line. It is our guide. And we're gonna sew a fourth inch seam allowance on each side of the line. So instead of pinning the all, I give them a quick press um, because it makes like a temporary heat adhesive and that way I don't have to pin. So down the other side. Okay, we've chain pieced these all together. Let's just clip the threads in between. And now that marked line can be your cut line. The next thing we need to do is square up our little half square triangles. And there's some debate about opening up your seams. And from what I've learned from my long arm quilter, she never recommends opening up your seams because it makes it so you have a weaker uh, quilt block because the strength is in the fabric, it's not in your threads. So it's nice to put your seams to one side. I'm gonna trim all these up. So I pull, this is a square up ruler, I pull that to a corner. And so you really only have to square up two sides and cut off dog ears on this one side. There we go. And now it's time to assemble our block. So we're gonna move these over here. We've got all our half square triangles and just follow along the pattern. We've got the F block. which is this white one and all four corners, all on the corners. 
and then we have our half square triangles with the white right there. Just make sure your blocks are flipped the right direction. It's like a puzzle, following along a puzzle. Okay, that's the last square. Look it over, compare it to your pattern, make sure it's correct. It's really easy to turn your, one of your half square tri triangles the wrong direction. And now we are ready to assemble our block by working row by row. I'm gonna sew all the rows this direction and then I'll sew all the rest of the rows the other direction. So I just like to flip over that second row to the first row like that. And then I pin it. Let's bring these pins over here. I pin it at the top and that reminds me where I'm starting my stitches. Now again, with all these squares in this block, you have to really be careful to make sure you have an accurate fourth inch seam allowance. Okay, let's sew this first row. All right, let's bring it back. We're gonna flip this over, open these up, make sure they're going the right way. We still are maintaining our pattern. That looks good. Oh, make sure they don't get twisted. I don't cut my threads. And it makes putting this block together with all these pieces so much easier if you don't. And we're just gonna build on row by row. So I'm gonna sew down this, bring it back, sew this side on until we've finished these five rows. Again, pinning at the top to remind me where I am starting my sewing. Okay, let's lay it all out. You can see why it's nice not to cut your threads in between and do a double check, triple check to make sure your blocks are all in the right, going the right direction. Now you just have one, two, three, four more seams and your block is finished. Now you notice I haven't pressed so far and so this is why, because I wanna nestle my seams, nest my seams together and I kind of finger press one direction and then I'm going to finger press these the other direction. I'm not going to worry too much about um, pressing them with, uh, at my ironing station. So I'm going to nest my seams by moving all these seams are going to go this direction and then on the opposite way on the other side. And then I'll give it a nice press at the end. Again, it's nice to have it attached with a couple little threads between your strips of fabric. And I'm gonna pin each of my rows. Again, these seams are all gonna go this direction. So I'm gonna kind of finger press all these seams going the other direction. And I'm gonna nest my seams just like that. And you can pin it all at once right now too. I might as well pin a couple rows while I'm here. Okay, we've sewn our last seam. Our block is assembled. We need to press it and square it up. So let's go press. 
kind of, on this type of lock, since I haven't previously pressed, I am going to press the back side. There we go. And now I'm just going to give it a little spritz. And get it nice and flat. We're ready to square up our block to 10 and a half inches. Bring in a rotating mat this time. Line everything up on the grid, just like that. Let me grab my rotary cutter. And the sundial quilt block is finished. We hope you've been enjoying sewing along and following along with us. Join us next time for the RBD block challenge for block number six.